everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Top Commercial Card Trends, presented by MasterCard and Corpay. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We have an exciting and informative session planned for you, focusing on how businesses are adopting commercial card programs and embracing the digital payments future. Uh, we're honored to have two distinguished speakers with us today who will share their insight and expertise on these topics. First, we have Danny Martucci, who is the president of Commercial Cards at Corpay. Danny is the general manager of Corpay's commercial card and expense business. Welcome, Danny. Thanks, Kurt. Nice to be with everyone today. And our second speaker is Charlie Reynolds. So Charlie is a tenured general manager at MasterCard. Charlie leads a team responsible for increasing carded penetration of the $70 trillion B2B payments market. Charlie holds an MBA and BE in mechanical engineering from Vanderbilt University. Welcome, Charlie. Thanks, Kirk. Great to be here. All right. So today's discussion, we're going to explore several crucial aspects of commercial cards. First, we're going to talk about adopting new AI technologies for fraud prevention. We'll delve into the integration of virtual card and AP processes. We'll talk about trends and perks and rewards with commercial cards. We'll also touch on the emergence of spend management platforms in the marketplace. And then finally, we'll wrap with uh, insights in on selecting the right commercial card program provider. Uh, without further ado, let's dive into our discussion. But before we do that, I want to invite you to submit questions throughout this discussion using the Q&A tool, which is located at the bottom of your screen. So Charlie, why don't you start us off by talking about how AI technologies are being adopted in the commercial card marketplace? Cool, thanks, Kurt. Uh, thinking about AI and payments, we've had AI or machine learning for a long time. It's very effective at repetitive tasks like beating back robotic fraud attempts. And as we go forward here with virtual cards in particular, the good news is that we don't see the same types of fraud that exists for regular consumer cards, but we see other things, because but but virtual cards are really effective at limiting fraud risk. And, and so just as an example, as a, as a program manager for your company, you'll set rules for how your virtual cards are used. And maybe I'm an employee and I get a card for a business trip to Dallas. The card's only valid for the three days that I'm traveling, has a spend limit of a couple thousand dollars and can only be used for hotels and restaurants. So if someone steals my number, they try to buy a TV at Best Buy, it just won't work. But, you know, fraud always find, finds the weakest links. And, um, you know, one example is authorized user fraud. And that's where someone who's, you know, an employee, an authorized car user of the card uses the card in a way that's not authorized. And you know, we just had this example in my, my backyard here in Connecticut. There's a car dealership that uses virtual cards to pay tow trucks who bring in cars for service. Sounds like a great use. The problem is the employee who was sub submitting the payments to the tow truck companies was paying fake companies that he controlled for tows that never happened. Kind of good old fashioned embezzlement just in a new channel. And so I think you know, the good news is we've got a good handle on a lot of the fraud but there's a lot more coming. And I think, Danny, you guys are using AI to go deeper and fight all these new things and optimize in new ways with sophisticated tools to help the program managers. Can you tell us a little bit about what Corpay is doing with AI today? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Charlie and Kurt, and, and good to be with everyone today. So yeah, really for, for in the fraud sphere, at least where we're using AI is primarily on, um, first on the credit underwriting or KYC kind of additional or the initial identity identification um, aspect of the customer lifecycle, and then more downstream um, for transaction monitoring to, to identify abnormalities or suspicious behavior. And so let me take each of those. So on the, on the upfront piece, it's really around kind of risk scoring um, and uh, for identifying customers, right? So we take, or AI can take, a number of different disparate data sources um, and then use those data sources and, and interpret those in a way that they can match up to the information that we receive about a customer in order to help us identify and underwrite that customer and, and keep the bad guys out. And then on the transaction monitoring side, similarly, uh, you know, IAI can ingest just large amounts of data, right? If you think about our transaction data, we have you know, of course, the basic things like transaction amount and merchant, but time of day and geography and 
um, even item level information or, or uh, SKU level information, um, AI can look at that and, and within the context of that customer and, and help us identify any areas that, that we would want to examine to help keep our customers safe and in, in, the, in the face of, of fraudsters really. Um, and then I just wanted to, you know, of course there's, there's several other applications of AI um, in the commercial card space outside of the, the fraud sphere uh, that I wanted to just comment on briefly. I mean, we're really seeing it across impact productivity across almost all of our functions, right? Where you think about co-pilots or, or you know, a generative AI type, type of applications that can just improve productivity across the work, uh, across the workforce, right? I was working with a, one of our product managers the other day and, and, you know, just like that, they could get a starting point on a, you know, identifying a, a you know, a ideal customer profile and, and writing a business plan against it using AI, right? Or similarly in our engineering um, world, there's all types of tools to help with, with writing code more, more effectively and efficiency. So I think we're re really going to see these productivity gains from AI per pervade across our, our ecosystem. And so that's, that's something just so for all of us as, uh, you know, in the workforce to really get smart on and, and, and uh, incorporate into our, to our roles as we go. Um, because I think these will be really a, a key part of harnessing the future. Totally agree. Thanks, guys. Uh, B2B payments fraud continues to be a hot topic of discussion. It's it's certainly interesting to learn more about the evolving methods to help combat it. Um, shifting gears now uh, over to the topic of virtual cards. Charlie, can you talk to us a bit about trends you're seeing in the continued integration of virtual cards for AP processes? Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, there, there's such a pace of technology development and all the underlying drivers are, I think, just becoming more accessible. And so the, the, the hurdles to people using these, these tools are, are constantly getting lowered. So I'll hit on three of my favorite drivers, um, you know, kind of from the demand side. As a business, it, but virtual cards can, can help you manage, uh, improve or create improved cash flow management. You control when payments are made and you manage when you pay, you pay your account off. So you're optimizing your working capital. And that's great. It's a new tool. It's easy to access and it's integrated into your other tools. Um, second, increased efficiency. Using virtual cards in, in place of checks, you know, it, it's mind boggling. Um, you know, if you talk to your kids, nobody writes checks. It's a pain in the butt, you know. Um, but anyway, so it saves time. It reduces fraud risks because there's still an awful lot of check fraud. Um, and it improves reconciliation. There's more data attached to the transaction that can then flow through your other systems. All that re reduces costs and errors in the system and makes benefits, produces benefits for the company. And lastly, one that um, you know seems obvious now, looking in the rearview mirror, but um, virtual cards really are a great tool for businesses that have remote work for remote workers. And you know that explosion of remote work um, after COVID has underscored the strength of, of one of the strengths of virtual cards. They don't have to be physically used like a check. So I, as, as a program manager, I can just email the virtual card to my supplier or to my colleague. They can use it instantly and with full controls. And there's no waiting to mail that check, you know, to, or even to email it, but because that still can, creates um, an image of the check that can be, you know, fraudulently manipulated. So those are, those are three of the drivers that really get my attention. And I think um, they have real benefits in the business world. Um, I don't know, Kurt, do you have, you have some favorites? Well, to, yeah, to, just to, <laughs> uh, but just to, yeah, to build on what, what Charlie was saying, I mean, it, for, for us at CorePay, we're the number one B2B commercial MasterCard issuer. And we've really been at the forefront of virtual cards and a pioneer in, in kind of the early days of this space. Of course, it's much more mature now, but really we, we find that customers find value um, kind of, you know, we focus on primarily on the Kind of what yeah what is the economic value for them and we, we find there's kind of two main areas one is just the the rebate that they can unlock by by utilizing this this uh payment method right so so no secret there right for for card payments that's often a uh an incentive and and so we can can put 
you know, spend that's already being being paid to suppliers, um, leverage the incentive off of that to pay pay our customers um, and, and help them turn their their AP cost center into more of a profit center. And then um, and then that's further multiplied by the power of our network. Right. So this is a really critical thing and 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 the landscape now. Um, we have a, a, a leading network of over a million um, card accepting vendors that allow us to optimize that that spend and rebate for our customers. And then the other side of the, the equation um, for what really drives the ROI for our customers are the, the process savings, right, or the efficiencies that they can gain in their operation. And so that really starts with just how easy it is to use virtual cards, right? Of course, the uh, you know, in the early days, it was was um, you know virtual cards may have been you know more passing you know numbers you know through secure methods, but but often required some manual processing, right? Today that we've integrated virtual cards into both the the purchasers um, workflow, right, with invoice automation, with workflows and approvals around of when a virtual card can be sent. Um, so fully integrated into the procurement and AP process, and then also compatible with with many systems on the receiving side, right? To make that a efficient end to end process. And then the the other point on the the kind of process efficiency front is uh, the the ERP integrations that that we offer and many players offer, right? So that the the um, you know, both the the kind of upfront requests of a virtual card, and then the the um, you know the back end data around around the the payment and the reconciliation of that payment, all is seamlessly integrated into an ERP system. That that's a that's a huge time saver for our customers, and and we find is a really um, critical enabler of of enabling virtual cards today. So back. Thanks, back guys. Uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of benefits uh, that go around uh, virtual cards and the commercial card program that go beyond even, you know, efficiency and payment security that we've talked to so far. Danny, do you want to talk to us about some of the other benefits, specifically some of the trends you're seeing around perks and rewards? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, perks and rewards are, of course, no that's not a not a new thing in the credit card space, right? It, but but in the in the commercial card space, we are seeing I think an acceleration. Whereas you know, traditionally, uh, companies you know, ca I think largely kept the benefits uh, you know for the for the company, right? And we're we're seeing in the commercial card space a broader approach to that, where uh, there's more cardholder benefits, right, or your employee benefits associated with the, with the value proposition. So, you know, so like some of the typical categories we see in the consumer space are really becoming more pervasive in the commercial space, right? So travel rewards and perks, right? We, the, uh, you know, of course the, the airlines and the, the, the hospitality players are, are, you know, have, have leaned into this as have more general issuers like ourselves. Um, but we're, you know, to applying it to our business, we're we're offering more and more perks in this in this category, like lounge access, for example. And then I think rebates and cash back are really are, are going to be kind of tried and true and here to stay. Um, we find that that you know our customers really value the the simplicity and the the just the the you know the clear economic benefits of of a cash rebate. So. We find that that is that is going to be we we find that will continue to be a, a key part of the of the value prop. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention is just just um, around integration with financial software. So I kind of touched on this in the virtual card space, but but increasingly I think in the in the um, you know the broader commercial card space. Like this is a really key part for not just an AP or virtual card program, but a broader commercial card program, mm -hmm. right? Whether that's um, T&E with the integration into expense management software, 
um, or other uh, parts of the spend management stack. Like that's a really critical um, part of the the perks that that come with a, a commercial card today, and will continue to to be so. Um, Charlie, what else would you emphasize here? Yeah, Danny, I think you hit all the key points. Um, I just go back on a couple things that get overlooked, um, and they they really have value to both the corporates and, and cardholders alike. Um, they don't apply to everybody, but but they're all available, and you know sometimes you don't know you need it until you get it. Um, and that's things like travel insurance. We know we all know how complicated uh, disruptions can be these days. And when you're traveling, you're probably also buying. And we've got a value added tax reclaim service that makes you know administrative processes easier. Nobody wants to go through and fill out the paperwork, and it's it automates that. Uh, and then depending on the program, we've got a health lock and an ID theft protection program. And you know, depending on how they're used, they've got value over a couple hundred bucks a year per cardholder. That's that's material if you get into one of those situations where you need it. And then overall, I'd, I'd say, to, you know, you, you said it, the rewards are going to continue to be there. And I think that's absolutely right. And the trend is, is kind of similar to the overall story that we're telling here. And that is that friction is coming out of the system. Risks are being mitigated. And the rewards are helping to accelerate the migration of payments to virtual cards because there's a, we've, we've talked about a dozen benefits here and the rewards are just amplifying that, that migration. Yeah, and I just wanted to just emphasize, you know, what we're doing at CorePay in this space. So we we recently launched our CorePay World Elite Mastercard, you know, in partnership with Mastercard, and so this our this product really comes with a lot of the the benefits that that Charlie and I have been talking through, um, but it's built on the foundation of our our strong purchasing card uh, and and purchasing platform. And then it adds in premium travel benefits to the mix to, to further incent the, the kind of employee cardholder, if you will. And so, um, so that has benefits like airport lounge access with priority pass um, and a number of different software and, and kind of experiential benefits that, that MasterCard provides. So we're really excited to, to launch that product and have that out in the market now. Awesome. Congrats on that. Thanks, guys. Um, you know, commercial cards and a commercial card program in and of itself bring a lot of value. Um, but now we're seeing them integrated with other commercial payment products. Uh, Danny, can you kind of start a conversation a little bit about the emergence of spend management platforms? Sure, sure. So so spend management, I think, is a just an, uh, you know, sort of a big trend in, in the commercial card space. I mean, maybe it's worth worthwhile just defining what that means or you know, at least what it means for us at CorePay. It's really all aspects of a, of a business's spend, right? Whether that's the, the more decentralized spend, right? Like employee spending, which would be, you know, typically on a, on a card and, 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 you know, the, the process around it is an expense report and an approval. And that ultimately sinks back to the, to the company's ERP. But then also it's all the more centralized aspects of that, which is the more traditional procurement and AP process. Um, and so that has the, you know, the full value chain from, from upfront sourcing and procurement through to uh, the, the actual payment process around that. So having the, you know, automating the invoice ingestion through to making the payment and then reconciling on the back end. So a lot, a lot of business process and and payment execution that are all encompassed in in span spend management today, and we're seeing this emergence of of solutions that tackle all of this in one platform. Versus historically, it would be you maybe had to go to two or three providers to to uh, you know meet your needs across those areas. So you know, why like we get why it makes sense for providers, right? Of course, we're, we as providers are always looking to do more and, and, and help our customers in bigger ways, but, but wanted to emphasize why it makes sense for the customer. And so um, first and foremost, it's just that centralized view of spending, right? So um, instead of having to go to disparate systems and disparate data sources, uh, you know, our solutions or this, this category of solutions that's emerging can help customers track and analyze their spending patterns, um, identify cost savings opportunities, 
and ultimately optimize their, their spending across many different categories all in one place. And then second, it's there's, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about integrations and the power of, of integrations and, and the commercial card space. Like this is another reason why, hey, do, do one integration, um, you know, have one, you know, chart of accounts to map to, have one, uh, you know, set of users that you're, you're syncing from your ERP, all of those things that, that save a lot of time and complexity can be captured with a spend management platform. And then it's really, I think the other powerful thing is just the, you know, the power of spend management is, is in, uh, you know, interacting with, with all of your employees in one place, right? So instead of going to diff a different place to request a PO and then another place to submit an expense report and then another place to approve uh, an invoice, all of that can happen in the same place with the same set of users, the same hierarchy and, and, and rules set around that. So that's, that's very, very powerful. Um, Charlie, anything else you'd, you'd add on that front? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, and it's really, I'm, I'm kind of smiling because, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what a spend management platform is. And, you know, today it's available to, you know, companies of almost any size. And it's, to me, it's a, a really, it's a really cool democratization of technology that's giving access to these amazing tools to increasingly smaller companies so they can compete and leverage all these amazing tools um, and insights and opportunities that that you're creating. Um, and then it gets out there in business cases and everybody can kind of grab onto it and take advantage of it. And that that's, to me, it's exciting and it's a trend that's not gonna slow down either. That's great, thanks guys. Uh, yeah, it's super interesting to watch the, uh, the marketplace with spend management platforms and the emergence of, uh, of new providers and platforms available out there. Um, you know, we've we've talked about a lot of compelling reasons to consider a commercial card program or, you know, maybe even selecting a different commercial card uh, provider for those of uh, in our audience who may already have a commercial card program. Um, Charlie, can you talk to us a little bit about tips that you have or insights in selecting the right commercial card program provider? Yeah, um, this is funny. I'm, I'm smiling because I'm thinking back. I've I've sold into some of the best procurement organizations in the world, and we won't name them. But the things they do really well are understand what their business needs, and they prioritize those things, and then they relentlessly work with their partners to find the right provider. And so that means you know, simple find providers that that who service your industry or somebody your size. And then, and then, you know, make sure that they they've got the right experience and expertise because, frankly, that helps you avoid mistakes because they've made them in the past and they've learned and moved forward. And finding that right provider ensures you start your program based on state of the art, not somebody who's starting up and, and doing it for the first time. Um, and kind of geeking out here, a uh, quote attributed to Albert Einstein helped kind of help ex uh, explain my view here. He once said, "If I were given an hour to save the planet, I'd spend 55 minutes defining the problem." And five minutes resolving it, and so I, I really, I really think that that underscores, you know, planning and thinking and prioritizing helps you pick the right partner. Then you can work carefully together to do the prioritization, understand the tools they've got, make that assessment, implement it, and then start a cycle of improving it constantly uh, because you're going to learn, your business is going to adapt, and you want a partner who's going to continue to push you and react to your business and always be pushing forward because nothing is sitting still in this space. Uh, Danny, you've got a couple specific ideas, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, a couple, couple to pile on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I won't go through the the typical kind of qualification questions that that we're all you know we're all familiar with around around you know support levels and cost to serve and integration, cap you know, compatibility, those types of things. But but just two additional ones, I think that. That should be on the list for for any company that's evaluating a commercial card provider is is the the power of the network, right? So there's the there's the Mastercard network, of course, but there's also the network within the network. And what I mean by that is is the you know the the primarily the virtual card network, right? And that the power of that in the B two B AP space. Um, so 
that that's a key thing to test on, right? We can just which can just increase the pie available of of, of spend for for your company, right? So asking those questions like, what's the size of the network? What what capabilities does your provider have to expand that network and 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 enroll vendors and manage that manage those vendors? Um, that that's a really critical thing to to unpack. And then the other one I'd add is just the general expertise of the partner that you work with, right? So, and I think that's kind of twofold. It's the 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 breadth of what they do and what they do well, and then it's the how long they've been doing it. So I, I encourage you to to select a provider that's that's you know has been around for a while, has some has some stability and some experience on their side, um, and then also has the the like the breadth and depth um, and and the core the core thing right which is which is issuing and and processing um, transactions and so um, it's important to find a provider I think that has that that expertise both in terms of of scope and and uh, tenure so um, I'll just leave it at that. Thanks, Danny and Charlie. Now let's open up for questions from our audience. Uh, we actually already have a few that came in during our presentation. For those that haven't already, though, there is an icon at the bottom of your screen for Q&A. Um, let's start with first question, but I also want to point out that we have a couple polling questions for our audience. Uh, you will see those polling questions on your screen. Please take a moment to answer them. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first question coming in. Um, is AI technology leveraged in commercial cards outside of fraud prevention? Charlie, this sounds like one that, that might be good for you. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Um, so yeah, we talked about it being kind of revolutionary in fraud, um, but MasterCard's also applied or deploying AI in a bunch of other places. And it's in our core operations where, you know, we're streamlining work processes that's saving money and improving service. And the cool thing there is that it's it's kind of transparent. So end users will never know what happened, but everything just works better. And it's, I think it's an incremental process that just will kind of continue. And it's it's just completely transparent to the end users. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all almost all over the business at this point. Great, thanks, Danny. Do you have anything to add to that? Well, I, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, you know that yeah, similar to what Charlie said of. You know, it's really like the the emergence of co-pilots have have just made a lot of different parts of our business more efficient from product work to engineering work to marketing work right there's really really no bounds on the on the power of it great great thanks all right we have one other question here uh can we issue a virtual card for an employee to use for travel expenses on a business trip and how would that work? How would they access the card? Danny, is that something you want to take? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a feature of our, our platform and our, our card program. And the way it works is, um, yeah, the, the card could be delivered via email or via mobile app. And it's just yeah, super easy to use for an employee on the go or, or um, you know, maybe it's a someone coming in for an interview or a a contractor that needs kind of a one-time um, use case. Um, so, so yeah, we see that as a common approach. Great. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, next question. Does your commercial card include a mobile app for expense reports? And can I put the card into my mobile wallet? I, Danny, this is another one for you. Yeah. 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 Yes to both. So, so our core pay complete platform is our, uh, you know, we talked about spend management, that's our spend management platform. And within that you can submit uh, expense reports both on the web and in and mobile. And then yes, yeah, same thing with, um, with cards, you can access the card in the mobile app and then add to your digital wallet, so. Great, great. All right, we have a few more. Um, are rebates earned for all virtual card use or just for play, just for paying suppliers? 
Danny, um, I think this is another both. good one for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, both. I mean, yes, it, it, there are rebates for virtual cards also. <laughs> yep. Super. Um, you mentioned the World Elite card. Are there annual fees for commercial cards that include perks and rewards, like you mentioned? You know, there there are. I'd say in the marketplace, there that that is fairly common. Um, and Charlie could probably speak to that also. But but for for our program specifically, we we do not charge an annual fee, right? So this is a a premium offering that that we reserve for for certain segments of customers. But but yeah, we we you know part of our go to market is to yeah not have an annual fee and really emphasize the the um, yeah the, the just improve the economics of the program for our prospects. Yep. Got it. Looks like we have a couple more here. Um, can I integrate my commercial card program with my ERP? Do you find that a lot of your clients are integrating uh, their commercial card program with their ERPs? Yeah, yeah, we we do, um, and so also that's another feature of our Core Pay Complete platform. Where um, it's uh, yeah we have gosh probably ten or fifteen ERPs that have native integrations and then another you know hundreds that we can service through file transfers um, but but yes that that is a a really key thing for to add efficiency and convenience for our customers. Great. All right, we have looks like one more. Um, is there a business size that is a best fit for a commercial card program? Um, I mean, Charlie, I'm interested in your broader perspective too. But for we really serve a broad range of customers from from the largest enterprises to to you know companies with you know maybe maybe five million dollars in revenue or or something like that. Um, we do have products that 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 um, can go even even below that, but but yeah, core pay we we serve kind of that wide range. Yeah, yeah and more broadly, I, I think um, you know the history is yeah, it started with the biggest biggest companies, and they were doing cool stuff and integrating to their ERPs, and now, as you know, we kind of said earlier, as things get democratized, it's easier for smaller companies to get these tools and 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 recover the benefits. I think that trend just continues to go down to you know the smallest um, or ever ever smaller partners, and it makes sense as they go. Great, thanks, guys. Um, I think that wraps up the questions that we have. I want to take a moment to thank our panelists, Danny and Charlie. Thank you both. Uh, also, thank you to our audience for joining us this afternoon. You'll see the poll questions up on your screen now. Please take a moment to answer those two poll questions for us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Danny. Thank you.